We're gonna solve this integral using Glaser's Master Theorem. This is a theorem that many people use on integration Bs. I've seen it many times when people are solving problems from the MIT integration B. So let's go ahead and show you how this works and why it's so freaking cool. So here's the integral that we're gonna solve today. We have the integral from negative pi to pi of x squared over x to the fourth plus seven x squared plus one. Now, it might look a little intimidating, but Glaser's theorem really helps us understand and find the solution of this fairly easy. So let me go ahead and show you. So what is Glaser's master theorem? I'm just gonna put GMT. So this tells us that if you have an integral from negative infinity to infinity of f, of x minus one over x with respect to x, then that is actually gonna to equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of simply f of x with respect to x. And look at how powerful that is because if we have an integral that we have x minus one over x in that form, then we can simply just get rid of that and write it as a simple integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here on the top. Let's go ahead and start off by first dividing everything by x squared. So I divide this by x squared, divide this by x squared, and I'm dividing this by x squared. So what's gonna happen? Well, our integral will become negative infinity to infinity of one over, and then we're gonna have x squared plus seven plus one over x squared with respect to x. So let's talk about how we got that. We got the x squared over x squared on the top, that was just one. And then we have x to the fourth over x squared, that was x squared. Then the seven x squared over uh, x squared just became a seven, and then we have the one over x squared. Now, how do we get to turn this into x minus one over x? Well, we sort of have this right here. We have the x squared and we have the one over x squared. So let's just kind of focus on the bottom here. What would happen? If I rewrite this as x minus one over x squared, okay? That's kind of the objective that I want. I want it to have an x minus one over x squared. So let's just sort of simplify this out by foiling. And by that, I just mean what would, what would happen if I were to rewrite it like this. This will become x squared minus two plus one over x squared. Let's think about how I got that. x times x, the x squared. x times negative one over x is negative one. And then you do it again, negative one over x times x is also negative one. When you add those together, I get the negative two and then I have the positive one over x squared. That's what I have here, x squared, one over x squared. So I need to account for that. I still have the plus seven, but then technically when I multiply these out, I have a negative two. So I have to make sure that I also add a two on here. Hopefully that makes sense. And everything should make sense. I was just making sure that I did my math correct. If I did anything wrong, please let me know, but I feel like the math is gonna check out. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. Whoops, I should definitely have a dx here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this back on top. Now this is gonna give us the integral from negative infinity to infinity of one over, and then I have x minus one over x squared, and then I have simply the seven plus two, and that's gonna be plus nine with respect to x. So think about what happened here, okay? I did some factoring so that I can have the x minus one over x. And by Glaser's master, master theorem, this tells me that if I have f of x minus x, or f of x minus one over x, all I'm gonna get is an f of x. So this, by Glaser's master theorem, will become integral from negative infinity to infinity of one over simply x squared plus nine with respect to x. So what happened here is this was my f of x minus x, and this right here will become my f of x. And guys, we can simply integrate this using just a simple arc tan integral. I can make a video about that if you like, but hopefully people that are watching this will understand that this will become one third tan inverse of x over three, and then we're still technically, now we're integrating from negative infinity to infinity, we should be taking the limits, but at this particular point, especially during the integration Bs, they don't do that. So you have to remember, we're approaching infinity. Now arctangent behaves like this. Whoops, it should really cross through the origin there, but it has a horizontal asymptote at pi over two and it has a horizontal asymptote down below at negative pi over two. So as we approach infinity, we're approaching pi over two. So this will be one third times pi over two minus, and then you're approaching negative infinity, and that's negative pi over two. Well, with the negative here, we also have a positive. We can combine these together, and you have pi over six plus pi over six. In other words, two pi over six, and simplify this, to pi over three, and that is our solution when we use Glaser's Master Theorem to solve an integral that looks otherwise complicated but can become very easy 
to get our solution. And that's all I have for today. I'm going to try to be posting one video every other day here on YouTube. It's a little more difficult, but feel free to leave me a comment. Please like the video and subscribe if you have the chance. And I'll see you in the next one.